Hello, everyone, and thank you for your time today to listen to my presentation on climate change and its possible solutions for the future. The problem that I decided to focus on for today is gasoline and its possible alternatives for the future. So first of all, before I tell you about its solutions, I need to tell you about gasoline right now. In America alone in 2015, 140.3 billion gallons of gasoline was used. Now, why is this harmful? When gasoline is burned, it releases it releases toxic substances such as carbon monoxide and greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide. The toxic toxic substances are dangerous for humans and for animals, and greenhouse gases cause global warming as they trap heat on the surface of the earth and as a result warm our planet. In addition to gasoline being harmful for our planet, it is also a non-renewable source of energy, which means that if we continue consuming at the current rate, there will eventually be none left. Because of this, we need to find a new way to power our lives. One possible solution is renewable energy. For example, tidal uh, is a solution. However, the issue with tidal is that um, it can kill wildlife. Wind is another solution. Though the problem with wind is that it disrupts people's daily lives who live near them. Biomass also. Although the problem before what I'm about to tell you is that it was way too expensive. Now, so I was watching a 60 Minutes episode with my family a little while back, and it turned to a show where a man named Marshall Metoff uh, buried himself away in a garage for 15 years, yes, real story, um, and figured out, this may sound far-fetched, but he figured out the solution to climate change. Now, what do I mean by that? So, biomass has always been a possible solution to climate change. Biomass is basically harnessing uh, you know, crops and other things that come from the earth and turning them to power. An example of this is ethanol. Ethanol comes from corn and it can be used as uh, to power cars. Um, in fact, uh, when Henry Ford made the original car, it could run on corn ethanol. The problem with uh, biomass before this is that it was way too expensive. It was also very tough to mass produce. But shockingly, despite the fact that Medoff had had no scientific background and was actually a trained businessman, he discovered a way to make this very available. Now, what he did was he discovered a way to mass produce uh, creations with cellulose. So cellulose is found in the cell wall of plants, and what it is, is it's basically a structure that can be turned into power. Cellulose is also the most abundant um, organic compound in the world, uh, and before Madoff's idea, many other scientists had attempted to use cellulose, but, did not, but hadn't have figured out a way to do it cheaply. Uh, they came up with expensive ways to do it, uh, but since they are very costly, they could be mass-produced. In Metoff's idea, although these may sound expensive, he uses electron beams, which are actually very inexpensive. He extracts the sugars from the cell wall and then uses enzymes to break them down to create many different products. One of those is a new type of ethanol that can be put into your car uh, just like gasoline, and it can run, uh, and it runs the exact same way as gasoline would, with much lower emission. In fact, it actually benefits the environment. This fuel can be made to, uh, can be used to make um, car fuels and even jet fuels that benefit the environment by taking a massive dent out of the oil industry. In fact, it can even eliminate up to 30% of the all of the oil of the gasoline use in the world. In the 60 minutes episode, there was even a time when they did a demonstration 
um, Madoff's car, he had filled it full of his fuel, and they took it for a drive outside on the road. And it ran just as well as gasoline. They even said so and showed it in the in the um, in the video. And the great thing about it also is that if this were to be implemented, uh, there would not need to be any change in current gas stations, as it can be pumped into your car just like gasoline. Now, the amazing part about Xylico is that this is not their only innovation. In addition to completely not completely, but for the most part, up to 30% um, solving the gasoline crisis, it can also solve, and I mean completely, the plastic crisis. Yes, Xylico has created a product that can uh, replace plastics altogether in our world. It has created a plastic that is made out of plants that within 11 weeks uh, can be fully biodegradable. Uh, basically, they can program it to uh, for how long they want it to take. And when within 11 weeks, they even did a demonstration in the 60 Minutes episode, uh, it can, it's just, you know, you can crack it. It's, it's being uh, degraded. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, why haven't, you know, why hasn't this been mass produced yet? Now, Although Zalico is amazing, Zalico has a few problems uh, starting up. One in particular is that the Zalico headquarters was to be built in Moses Lake, Massachusetts, but got halted by the government because Zalico apparently did not cooperate in meeting the city's requirements to begin production. The issue is that Zalico had been withholding information about the contents that would go inside the factory. And this raised a red flag as the fire department needed to know what was inside the factory so that they could respond in the event of an emergency. The community developmental director, Gil Alvarado, despite, stated that beside, despite the fact that the, com, um, despite the community expressing their concern, Xylico continued to place processing equipment in the factory. With this, he was forced to shut down the project until Xylico could become more clear on their equipment. Despite this, Alvarado is convinced uh, was convinced that Xylico will still be able to get their observation running soon, and once it begins, that they will find great success. Now, as you can see by this, it may be a bit tough to get this going, but this obviously has unbelievable potential. Once this gets running, Xylico may absolutely destroy a massive dent in the oil industry, making it unnecessary for uh, gasoline to be pro- a lot of gasoline to be produced, and may encourage other sources of renewable energy to undergo innovations such as these. In addition to this, as I said before, it can also destroy a lot of the need for plastic, and could even uh, make a big dent in um, not necessarily get rid of it, but could stop the production of plastic, which would um, stop uh, things such as the garbage island forming the ocean, and then we can just focus on cleaning it up. Now, in addition to um, Zalico making these products, Zalico can also make several other um, products that will replace the need for them in uh, for the need for pollutants of uh, f- for example um it can you know as i said before plastics and then also it can create fertilizer uh fertilizers and pesticides so a big problem with pesticides is that um the pesticides although they're very good at um repelling bugs and killing them they're it's also toxic material that's going into our food. Now, if it was made natural, uh, this problem would be eliminated. In addition to this, Xylico has also created a sugar that doesn't rot your teeth. Now, this may sound unbelievable, but it's actually true. Uh, in addition to this, there are many other products, but uh, 
um, I don't think it's necessary for me to go into them for for the for now. Now, that marks the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you found this interesting. Now, if you would like to know anything more about Xylico, um, please check out the website www.zadlico.com or ask me for any more information. Have a great day and thank you very much.